Hi, so today's class is on peritonitis. Peritonitis is acute or chronic inflammation of the visceral or parietal peritoneum and endothelial lining of the abdominal cavity. This can be life-threatening. The peritoneal cavity is a potential space between the perit parietal peritoneum and the visceral peritoneum. That is, the two membranes that separate the organs in the abdominal cavity from the abdominal wall. The peritoneal fluid is present in between the visceral and parietal membrane. There is normally about 50 ml of sterile peritoneal fluid. It has anti-inflammatory properties, antibodies, immunoglobulins, and the white blood cells. It lubricates the organs in the peritoneal cavity. Intraperitoneal organs include the stomach, the first 5 cm, and the fourth part of the duodenum, jejunum, ileum, cecum, appendix, transverse colon, sigmoid colon, and the upper third of the rectum. Other organs located in the intraperitoneal cavity are the liver, spleen, and the tail of the pancreas. The causes for peritonitis. Primary peritonitis occurs when disease-causing organisms gain entry into the peritoneal cavity. Intestinal and gastric contents irritate the normal sterile peritoneum, which produce an initial chemical peritonitis, and once bacteria gain entry, it is followed by a bacterial peritonitis in just a few hours. The resulting inflammation inflammatory response causes vasodilation and increased capillary permeability, allowing leukocytes and subsequent phagocytosis of the offending organism. But if this fails, it will result in widespread inflammation and massive fluid shifts and edema. This also results in the formation of adhesions as the body attempts to wall off the infection. Secondary causes are the most common causes for peritonitis, perforation and peritoneal dialysis being the most common. Other causes include ruptured appendic appendicitis, um, diverticulitis, trauma to the abdominal organs, ischemic bowel disorders, perforation, and pancreatitis. Clinical manifestations for peritonitis includes abdominal pain. Abdominal pain is the most common symptom of peritonitis. A universal sign of peritonitis is rebound tenderness over the involved area due to inflammation. Rebound tenderness in the abdomen is referred to as the Blumberg sign. This is also accompanied with muscular rigidity, spasms, and other signs and symptoms of inflammation like fever, tachycardia, tachypnea, abdominal distension, nausea, anorexia and vomiting, and changes in bowel habits. Patients usually tend to lie still and take only shallow breaths because even the slightest movement, movement can cause pain. The diagnosis of peritonitis is usually by radiological studies. An x-ray of the abdomen or the KUB may show dilated loops of the intestines if there is paralytic ileus, free air if perforation has occurred, or air and fluid levels if there is a bowel obstruction. Ultrasound and CT scans will help in identifying abscesses and ascites. Analysis of the peritoneal fluid will help to identify blood, bile, pus, bacteria, fungus, and amylase content if the, if the pancreas is involved. L laboratory studies including CBC, BMP, ABGs will help to determine elevations in the white count which will indicate infection and hemoconcentration from fluid shifts. This will direct the need for more IV fluids, blood transfusion or albumin administration to pull back the water into the cells. 
complications of peritonitis. Massive fluid shifts can result in dehydration of the cells and oliguria resulting in possible renal failure and hypovolemic shock. Bacterial infection can occur and can enter the bloodstream resulting in septicemia and septic shock. The inflammatory process can become severe if not treated quickly and can progress to abscess formation which can result in sepsis. Massive fluid shift and third spacing can cause fluid to, to escape from the extracellular fluid compartment into the peritoneal cavity, connective tissues and the GI tract. Peristalsis slows or stops in response to the peritoneal inflammation and distension of the intestinal lumen with gas and fluid. This is referred to as a paralytic ileus or a dynamic bowel. Treatment for peritonitis. Non-surgical treatment includes keeping patient NPO and NG tube to low intermittent wall suction to decompress the stomach and the intestines. IV fluids and broad spectrum antibiotics are started immediately on diagnosis of peritonitis. Isotonic IV fluids replace fluids lost from the extracellular compartment. Oxygen is administered according to patient's respiratory status. One other complication that could occur is ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome which occurs as a result of increased abdominal pressure against the diaphragm from intestinal distension and fluid shifts to the peritoneal cavity. Oxygen is administered according to the patient's respiratory status and analgesics are given for pain and tenderness. Electrolytes are replaced and closely monitored as needed. Surgery is indicated for identifying and repairing the cause of peritonitis. Surgery focuses on controlling the contamination or infection, removing the foreign material from the peritoneal cavity, and draining the collected fluid, which may be peritoneal fluid or abscess drainage. Before the surgical incision is closed, irrigation of the peritoneum with antibiotic solution is done and drains such as a Penrose drain is inserted to facilitate drainage of irrigation fluid. Nursing management. This includes assessment and formulating the nursing diagnosis <coughs> and planning the interventions and evaluation. Assessment includes assessing patient's pain, including the location, Assessing vital signs, level of consciousness, and respiratory status, including the rate and breath sounds. Presence and quality of the bowel sounds, increasing abdominal distension, abdominal guarding, which is also called as Murphy's sign, nausea, fever, and signs and symptoms of dehydration and hypovolemic shock. Acute pain is related to inflammation of the peritoneum and abdominal distension. Fluid volume deficit related to fluid shifts into the peritoneal cavity, secondary to trauma, infection, or ischemia. Anxiety related to uncertainty of cause or outcome of the condition and pain. Knowledge deficit related to cause of peritonitis, treatment, medications, and its side effects and follow-up. The goals for a patient with peritonitis would involve resolution of inflammation, relief of abdominal pain, freedom from complications, maintaining normal nutritional status, and meeting the learning needs. Nursing care involves insertion of IV line and administering fluid, antibiotics, analgesics, and antiemetics as needed. A fetal position with knees flexed may increase comfort. Sedatives may be given to help with anxiety. Accurate monitoring of vital signs, 
level of consciousness, daily weights, fluid intake and output, electrolytes and respiratory status. A semi-fowler's position will help promote drainage of peritoneal contents into the lower region of the abdominal cavity which will help to increase lung expansion and will ease breathing. Maintain an NG tube to low intermittent wall suction and the patency of other and maintain the patency of other peritoneal drains. Maintain sterile techniques with peritoneal drains. Parenteral nutrition may be started if NPO for more than four days and based on the pre-albumin levels and the nutritional status, TPN or PPN may be indicated. Patient's ability for self-management is to be assessed before discharge. Oral and written instructions to report includes unusual or foul smelling discharge, um, drainage, redness, swelling, warmth, bleeding from the incision site, fever higher than 100.5 degree Fahrenheit, increased abdominal pain, constipation or unable to pass gas. Pati patients should be given education regarding the medications to be continued and follow-up visits. Patients should also refrain from lifting for at least six weeks. To summarize, peritonitis results from a localized or generalized inflammatory process of the peritoneum that occurs when organisms or chemicals enter the sterile peritoneal cavity. It can occur when sterility is inadequate during peritoneal dialysis and when an organ perforates, releasing its contents into the peritoneal cavity. Common symptoms of peritoneal irritation include a board-like hard abdomen, rebound tenderness, or increased pain with movement. Major concerns are maintaining fluid and electrolyte balance and preventing septic shock. Surgery is usually indicated to drain purulent fluid and repair damage. Other care includes antibiotics, nasogastric suction, analgesics, and IV fluid administration.